Hi guys, this is Lanikia, and I'm coming to you with another episode of The Young and the Restless. Today is 3-14-2022. Um, and, oops, sorry about that, spring break, y'all. Um, so today is 3-14-2022 and Monday. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Um, okay, so we start off... It, it, the, on a scale of one to ten, this has to be. This was a solid seven point five eight. Um, just because finally the storylines are moving along and and it's getting somewhere. Okay, so just to get them out of the way because they don't interact with other people, um, we'll go ahead and do Jack and Phyllis. So Jack and Phyllis um, are at the house and. Um, Allie has come in, right? So Allie is there, and please don't make me not like Allie. <laughs> I'm going to give Allie the benefit of the doubt that she's just overwhelmed and she's emotional, and you can tell that she doesn't have a good relationship with her mother by the things that she was saying. And that's why she was acting this way, because if this, we don't need another Victoria. I, I'm just putting that out there. We do not want another Victoria on this soap opera. Um, but okay. So they're telling Allie that Jack says I'm Kimo's dad or Han's dad. And, um, she's like, he never mentioned you or anything. So he starts to give, show her proof. He shows a photo of the grandmother and, um, Alon and Jack on their wedding day. He shows her the paternity uh, test for chemo. He shows her all this information and he shows her the letters. And she gets emotional about the letters and everything because she was like seeing her dad's handwriting and he's no longer here. And she said her mom did come in, you know, because they asked her, do you think your mom could have known and she just didn't tell you? And so she said, my mom came in for the funeral, but, um, no, she would, she wouldn't have known this. Um, but her mom came in for the funeral, but then she had to leave because she said she had to work. So you could tell that she doesn't have this great relationship with her mom just because of the way her attitude was when she was speaking about her. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, just because the way her attitude was when she was speaking about her and everything. So then we, um, so they, they keep talking and she, she wants nothing to do with Jack. She says, my dad didn't want anything to do with you. And he said, we, well, he had came to the conclusion of reconcile, you know, just reading his letters. I can tell that's what he was coming to, but she don't want nothing to do with Jack. She's, She's over it. And so there's pretty much nothing Jack can do. He just tells her, I can't walk away from this. He was, And they ask her, well, Phyllis tries to ask her, are you the person who was sending the text message? And she was like, are you trying to accuse me of that? No, I was not the person who was sending the text message um, to you guys and everything. And Jack is just like, listen, please reach out to me. Like if you need anything because you don't have your dad, you don't have any close family or anything. And this is a lot to take in. And I hate to think about you going through this alone. So he's like, please reach out to me. I want to help you and everything. And she's pretty like much like I'm cool. And so before she leaves, he asks her the box on the table. He asks her, could he please, um, take the things. And she says, there's nothing of interest that she wants from the box. And he says, there is one thing. Um, can you do me a favor? I have this locket. I mean, this necklace that I gave Lon, your grandmother. Um, and she refuses to take it. I was like, okay, okay, girl, I understand this is a lot to take in, but you're being like, you're being kind of nasty. And I don't like that. I'm like, don't, I don't want another storyline like this. So yeah. If that's how y'all gonna bring her on, please keep her away. I don't want another storyline. Like, I want somebody that's somewhat receptive. Okay, so she leaves, and then Phyllis talks to Jack, and he's like, oh, it's just a lot for Allie to take in. And Phyllis said, okay, enough about Allie. How are you? And so they're gonna get, but end of the day, they're gonna get to the bottom of who was sending this these text messages and stuff to them and why they won't just reveal themselves and everything. Um, so then we see... Okay, so then Ashlyn, um, okay, so Nikki talks to Victor, right? So she goes and talks to Victor and she tells him, you got to have proof. And he says, Michael Baldwin sent me this before he disappeared. And so Michael was able to send Victor um, the documents that showed proof that Ashlyn is lying. So she's like, oh my gosh, because Nikki is like, she doesn't want this to be happening, but she wants Victoria to know the truth. So he says he's got to go talk to Victoria. And she's like, Victor, 
this like this has to be 100 sure fact because you are this could ruin your relationship with victoria and he's like i understand but i I have to protect her like even if she's mad at me i ha still have to protect her so she goes to the coffee house to go and get them um something to drink um or get them lunch i think she said and when she goes there ashlyn is there so ashlyn is talking to nikki and he's just like, he needs her on his side because Victor is believing these lies. And she tells them, I don't know anyone like who would have an enemy that would make these type of lies up, lies up about um, people. And so, Vic, so Ashlyn is just like, I don't know. And then he tries to do the same thing that he tried to do to Victoria and Nate. He tries to pull it on Nikki about Victor and the company. And maybe he doesn't see somebody, want somebody like him in charge. And, you know, he, you know, he's a straw man. And she said, no, 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 that's not it. <laughs> that is not it. Victor has like Victor's not intimidated by any other man. And on top of that, Victor fought to get you in the family. Like she said, our family protected you when all these stuff was going around about you. We, we rallied around you. So that's not it. Like Victor has to know this information that the proof. So Nikki talking too much and tells him something about proof or whatever. And he says, does Victor have more, more information or something? And she, she covered it up a little bit by saying, it doesn't matter what Victor knows. What matter is that you need to prove your innocence to us. Like if Victor is saying that these things are coming from these people and they're saying this and it's a lie, then you need to prove your innocence. And he's, and he's talking about, you know, talking and she's like, no, 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 we're not just going to trust your word. You have to actually show us that you're innocent. I mean, I'm like, it's very simple. All you have to do is give, like, give up those doctor reports. It's the family. I mean, they're not going to run around spreading, you know, telling people all you have to do is give up your doctor's reports. But anyways, um, so that's with Ashlyn and Nikki. So then while she's doing that, Victor is with Victoria. So he's over there with uh, Victoria and he's talking to her and she doesn't want to hear this. Um, he's talking, he brings in the file. He's like, I'm not leaving until you read this. But Victoria's like, I don't want to read this. Like, I am upset with you and disappointed that you would ever accuse my husband of doing something like this or whatever. And she said, um, you should trust my judgment. And Victoria's just the same thing they've been saying for the past two weeks. Um, so she's like, you should trust my judgment and everything. And, and Victor is like, I want to protect you. Like, I don't want to see you hurt. Like, and I don't want a bad relationship with you. But I, I have to do this because I have to protect you. And then he tells her, um, then she lets him know. I've already made him co-CEO. And I was like, can't you see? Like, Victor was disappointed with that, but he glazed over that. <laughs> like, he didn't even, he was disappointed. I'm sure he cares about that. But just the fact that he really wasn't, like, mad or upset about her doing that, what he wants her to do is see Michael, I mean, Ashlyn, for who he really is. Um, so that should have been proof enough that it's not about the company for her. Um, it's about protecting her. And he keeps telling her this. And she's going on about the men in my life always hurting me, say they love me, but they hurt me. And then he tells her, this envelope, this envelope, envelope shows proof that Michael Baldwin sent to me before he disappeared. And she said, excuse me, what do you mean he disappeared? Because she was, she told him that she had tried to call, reach out to Michael. And he said, Michael would text me or email me two, three times a day. And I haven't heard from him. He said, neither has Lauren. And all of a sudden he's gone. And I'm like, why don't you tell her the doctors are gone too? <laughs> like the doctors are missing too. And she's like, and you think Ashley has something to do with it? And he says, it's no coincidence that he knows we were looking into him. And now all of a sudden, Michael is missing. And she's like, Mike, Ashley would never do that. She keeps going on about it. Ashley would never do that. And so Victor is just like, here, I'm going to give you these documents. You look those over. I don't want to hurt you. I love you. I'm trying to protect you. And I would rather you be mad at me and, and, and then look, you know, then look that out here look looking crazy. And so he gives her the documents and she's like, um, she turns away, girl, read those documents. And he leaves. And, um, 
So then we see he goes and speaks to Nikki. Nikki and Victor meet up again. And he tells her that he told Victoria. And she says, Victor, you have to, I mean, you got to be sure. And he said, oh, and he also told Victoria, I have more proof. I like, I have copies of more copies of these documents. But he um, tells Victoria, Nick, excuse me, Victor tells Nikki, like, I want Victoria to be, ha like, I don't want to hurt her. But I can't watch her go through this and not tell what's going on, like not tell what's going on. I'm trying to protect her. And I don't really think she's angry at me. I think she's slowly going to realize the type of man that she is married. So he was like, yes, she was angry at me, but I, I don't take that personal because her anger isn't really towards him. Victoria knows Ashlyn because she wouldn't have tried to call Michael if she didn't know that she wouldn't be trying to defend him to the depth of her if she didn't really believe that he had something to do with that. So now we go back to Ashlyn and Victoria. So he comes in and she tells him um, because Victoria told her earlier and also she sees it in the document. She said, Ashlyn, why is it that there's this company um, that we have, it's a small radio company. It doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything. It's not making any money. It's just there. Like, you know how sometimes you just have something and it's just there. It's not running. It's not, it's, it's running, it's functioning, but it's on compared to what Newman and Locke have. That is the least of the things that matter to them. Like it will probably be at the very bottom of the totem pole. And so she's like, why is that company sending money, like sending money to people, the doctors in Peru? Like, why is that one of our companies doing that? She said, you would, she said, you wouldn't even know it. Like you would have to really be searching and digging up dirt to find that out there. They're doing this. And she said, and Michael Baldwin was, and what, why, why is that? Ha why is that happening? And that's how it went off with her asking Ashlyn. And then we see the upcoming weeks, I mean, up coming this week. And it's going to really be like him confronting Nate. Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't, Put Nate in this to get him, Ashlyn, trying to do something with him. Because I actually do like the Nate character. But then she sits down and she talks to Nick as well. Um, and, you know, he's like, so you're starting to have your doubts. So it's all starting to finally come together because this, it was moving a little slow. And um, I hope this Jack and Phyllis thing, they need to speed this up as well. Like, because they've been in this abandoned house for a long time. So, but that was the Young and the Restless today, guys. I will see you tomorrow for another episode of it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.